Hello, JNM here, and in this tutorial, I want to show you how to create Blender add ons with Python. And as an example, I created this one with that you can draw points onto a mesh and then connect these points to a new mesh. Perhaps a good start for a Retopo add on. Who knows? So, what you can do with this add on is you can press Ctrl, Shift, and D to start a so called draw mode, and then Ctrl click onto the mesh to add new points snapped to the mesh. Then you press the Enter key, Close Mesh option is not enabled and a new edge is created. Then we can extrude this edge and flip the normals and we have a good start for a Retopo Mesh. Now you could go ahead and add a Shrink Wrap modifier. Perhaps I will add an option to the add-on so this is done automatically. And then we can use Mesh tools like the Poly Build to extend the mesh. If the option close mesh is enabled, a face is created for the points that we added onto the mesh. And with this you can create simple meshes very fast. Ok, so let's see how to create an add-on like that. It is not easy, but it's a kind of template. We start with the init file, with the BL info dictionary, where you can for example define the name or the description of the add-on. You also import the classes for the operator and the panel, but I will explain these later on. Then I define a global property in draw mode, which I use to avoid starting the draw mode operator multiple times. And then we have here the seam property called close mesh that you saw in the panel of the add-on. Alright, the classes that I want to register I add here to the classes tuple and then I register the classes in a for loop. And when the add-on is unloaded then I unregister the classes. Ok, and the last thing I do here is to add a keyboard shortcut to activate my operator and I set it to shift, control and D. Alright, that's it for the init file, now let's come to the draw mode operator. You see I imported some modules, for example the BLF for drawing text onto the screen or the BMesh for creating meshes. Here's some own modules, but I'll come to this in a moment and of course the operator class because the operator is derived from this class. Also important is the ID of the operator because we have to refer to this, for instance when you add it to a panel. Then we have the poll method that checks if the operator can be activated and when the global property in draw mode is true, it is active already and I return false. Ok, here is the constructor in that I create some member variables, some drawing handles and a vertex container, an own class that I'm going to explain in a moment. Basically, it is to store the points that I draw onto the screen. The method invoke is called when the operator yeah, is invoked, when it is activated and then I register 2D and 3D drawing handlers and the operator as a modal operator. The draw handlers are methods that you can register to draw 2D or 3D into the viewport. And as you know in this add-on we are drawing text and 3D points. When the operator is closed we have to unregister the draw handlers and also set in draw mode to false. Ok, a modal operator has this modal method that is called all the time to handle events. We can check for example if the escape key is pressed then we are finishing the operator or when the enter key is pressed we are creating a mesh from the points that we added. Here you can see if the mouse is moving or if the left mouse button is released or pressed. And if it is pressed, I check if the control key is pressed as well. Then I get the 2D position of the cursor and call a method to check if I hit a mesh in the viewport. This one, get 3D for 2D. The returned 3D vertex I add to the vertex container. Let's have a look at this function, get 3D for 2D. First I call another function to get the origin and the direction for the 2D point. We can use built-in Blender functions to get these values. These are the functions and you find them in the module BPY extras. We need these to do a ray cast to find out if we hit a mesh when we are clicking in the viewport. 
It can be done with this method here seen raycast. The first parameter for the raycast is a bit tricky. Because in Blender versions greater 2.91, you have to use the depth graph and not the view layer anymore. So I wrote a method get raycast param to be version independent here. Okay, but then we can find out with the raycast if we hit an object in the viewport and we can return this location. Alright, now we have a point that we can add to the vertex container. So let's have a look at this class. It is not very complicated. Basically, it's a wrapper for this list of points of vertices and it has a built-in shader and a batch so that we can draw these points into the viewport. You can see we use the GPU module to get the built-in shader. The batch for the points is created here with the function batch for shader. The vertices are passed as a parameter to this function. And then in the draw method we can bind the shader and draw the points. Alright, and where do we call this draw method? Well, of course here in the draw mode operator, in the method draw callback 3D. You remember the method to draw 3D into the viewport. To draw text into the viewport, we use the method draw callback 2D and you see us set the color, the size and the position. Okay, and then we have to convert the points that we added to the vertex container to a mesh and this is done in the method to mesh. You see we get the vertices from the vertex container. Then we create a mesh and an object and link it to the scene. Then make it the active object and create a B-mesh from it. Then we go ahead and add all the vertices of the vertex container to the mesh that we created. And if the scene property close mesh is true, if it is checked in the panel, we add a face for these vertices. And if not, we just loop over the vertices and connect these with edges. Okay, that's it. We create the mesh, go to edit mode and select all. And basically, that's it. If you like to see the source code, I have it on my GitLab. We have quite a few research projects and if you like to get access, you can join my channel as a member, okay? Just press here this join button and then get access to all these perks. I give you special support, shoutouts for videos if you like and of course here the access to my GitLab. Okay guys, I hope this was interesting for you and I know this is not simple. So if you have any questions, then add these to the comments below. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter or Facebook or as I said, join as a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon here in the next one.